I just started my period and I don't have a tampon. I know all of us have been in this situation, but today it's got me wondering, is access to menstrual hygiene a social justice issue? Let's find out. If you're some kind of coupon clipping champion, you might get away with only spending $70 per year on tampons and pads. But the average uterus is doing its thing from age 13 to age 51. And that's about 456 periods over the course of 38 years. So even if you're only buying the cheapest tampons, and you're probably not, that's still about $3,000 over the course of your lifetime to absorb blood. Maybe that doesn't sound expensive, but the fact that these products aren't freely available in public like toilet paper is an inconvenience. To me, to you, to a lot of people. This is Chelsea. She helps people who have a really hard time getting a hold of a tampon. About two years ago, she saw something that she couldn't ignore. I was driving one day and I got stopped at a red light and I saw this homeless woman at the corner and she started crossing the street and I noticed that her bottoms were stained in blood. She was so exposed. I mean, it was, it was broad daylight. I just started looking around even more like, is anybody else seeing this shit? If we don't have these products, our health can be in jeopardy. STDs, STIs, urinary tract infections, toxic shock syndrome. But menstruation is necessary for humanity, period. People think like, oh, it's just the five to seven days that are important. No, it's every freaking day. It's a health issue. She was angry and she got curious. You are homeless. Where do you go when you have your period? She called every homeless shelter in Los Angeles until she finally got through to someone. She answered, we don't really have something directly for that specific moment or need. Since then, she's been in touch with a number of shelters and she agreed to come with me to Midnight Mission in Skid Row. This is the men's recovery. These are our dorms. Lady on deck, lady on deck. Are we dressed? Say hi. Hi. Hey. Hey. That's right. You have an excellent gym and a workout room so they can start working on their physical. When these shelters were founded in the early 20th century, homelessness was a man's problem. But now, among the 47,000 people living homeless in LA County, about one third are women. Here we go. This is the lovely women. They have to come see you guys. Hi, ladies. Shelters like Midnight Mission are racing to meet women's needs, but public understanding of homelessness hasn't kept pace. When people donate to these shelters, they normally think about men cleaning up for job interviews. I love that they have a library. They don't really think about women managing their periods. Second, there's some of my tattoos showing. <laughs> That's great. Nice. What's your, what's your tattoo of? Oh my gosh, well, I got it when I was incarcerated. This is Rita Richardson. She's a program manager at Midnight Mission. Where do your sanitary napkins, tampons, like, so where does that come from? Well, that's a good question. A lot of it's donated, and then um, mm -hmm. we have somebody through Gift and Kind that does um, seek out different sources to help with the keep of the overall functioning mm -hmm. and to keep that going, because that can become very expensive, as you, as you know. You know what I mean? So yes. it does help when people love to, you know, um, a wish list, per se, or something. So basically, they rely on donations. This is Janice Johnson. She lives in a tent on Skid Row, and she stops by Midnight Mission occasionally. What has it been like for you when you get your period? What do you do? Um, well, if the store is closed, I will have to, you know, go to the restroom, get some tissue, roll it up, mm -hmm. make a pad, or line it out of that. You got to be secure, Bob. You know, if you don't have the mm -hmm. real thing, you got to make your own. That's right. This is Barbara. She's been in the shelter for six months after being homeless for 20 years. She wants to become a drug counselor. A lot of the missions will pass that out to okay. you if you don't have it, if you don't have it. But if they don't have it and you don't have it, you have to hustle for it. Shelters like Midnight Mission do what they can for periods, but their supplies can be hit or miss. And only about 25% of the homeless population in LA County is in the shelter system anyway. 
that leaves a lot of people underserved and underwicked. Chelsea wanted to fill the gaps in the shelter system, so she decided to do something. Over here, really quick, the kids, they're doing like six of each thing. So six pads, six tampons, six panty liners. So we're doing um, wipes. She started Happy Period Put simply by calling her bag. friends and asking them to donate tampons, pads, panty liners, soap, underwear, pack them up, and deliver them to people on the street. It was that simple. So we know that tampons and pads and all of that stuff is important to our health and sometimes expensive and hard to come by. But did you know that on top of all of that, these items are taxed? Yep, they call it the tampon tax. Boo. But before you get all up in arms and take to Twitter, you have to understand that the tampon tax Boo. isn't a tax just on tampons. And it doesn't specifically target feminine hygiene products at all. It's just sales tax. You're like, who cares? Lots of stuff has sales tax, but state by state, a bunch of items are exempt from this tax. Stuff that's considered necessities. But do you know what that includes? In California, where I am now, Assemblywoman Christina Garcia co-authored a bill that she's trying to push through state legislature to exempt feminine hygiene products from sales tax. She tried this before in 2016, and it was unanimously approved until it got to the desk of Governor Jerry Brown, where he vetoed it. He called it a tax break, and in the state strapped for cash, that just wasn't gonna fly. What a buzzkill, right? If menstrual hygiene products can't be exempt from sales tax, then how did all of those other things become exempt in the first place? I thought it would help to consult an expert in economics. I was wrong. My name is Christopher Thornburg. I'm founding partner of Beacon Economics. I'm also the director of the Center for Economic Forecasting at the Business School at UC Riverside. Well, I'm curious about how all of those exemptions get determined because I've, I mean, I've thumbed through the exemptions in California. Right. Where do those come from? Um, well, obviously, it's based on political decisions, correct? I mean, it's, it's um, a game that gets played. Uh, every sector likes to pretend that somehow or other it provides a product or a service that is uh, at some sort of morally higher level than other products and services. So many interests are benefiting from like the politicization of these tax exemptions. Why can't menstruating women also benefit? But that's not an argument to the positive. That's an argument for why all these other exemptions should go away. These exemptions in general are not logical. The point here is exemptions are wrong. The reason you're here is to discuss logical arguments, not emotional arguments. The problem is, is I'm painting you into a logical corner and you're frustrated. I, no, I... And let, let, let me I'm, go to the next step, because look, I, you're, not, not, you're not even allowing me to fully construct my argument, okay? Because construct, construct let, cause let's, let's go back to the argument. Because the I argument you're trying this, to make is sure. okay, tell that, me the that, argument that menstruation is a female issue. That it, By and, and large, yes. Okay. If you're wondering what my face looked like during this interview, it was kind of like this. I'm sorry, if you're focusing your efforts on this tiny little thing, you're wasting your time. Because we have big issues in the world around us, real issues, things that we should talk about. And that's what your people need to hear. Fine, Stop focusing women on don't deserve these tax exemptions issue. because no it's one deserves these the tax needle. exemptions. Feminine it. hygiene it's products shouldn't be exempt from sales tax because right. nothing should be exempt from sales tax. Because we have a lot of problems out there. But I wasn't mad at this guy. I was mad that among all of the things worthy of sales tax exemptions, it was like nobody could admit that tampons might be one of them. And the message that this sends to women is, we need you to deal with your problem. So stuff some toilet paper in your coochie and shut up. It doesn't change what's happening on the ground. Do you think people ever think about a woman who's homeless and has her period? Do they ever, they ever consider the fact that you still might have your period? I don't think they even give a damn. How did you deal, in between panhandling and prostitution, how did you deal with your period? And I'm talking oh, about like... I had to get, uh, make uh, tampons mm -hmm. out of toilet paper, um, 
clean sock. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times I resorted to uh, stealing. Do you need any feminine product? Do you need feminine products? Feminine products like pads, tampons, wipes. You could grab one of these too. It's the same stuff. It's like wipes on it. Uh-huh, you're welcome. After someone suggests that you might be wasting your time on an issue, I think you're obliged to seek out a second opinion. I'm about to call Jennifer Weisswolf, the woman who's credited as like making the tampon tax an issue worth talking about. Hello. Hey, Jen, how's it going? Good, good. By day, Jennifer Weisswolf works at New York University's Brennan Center for Justice. But by night and on weekends and in basically any spare moment she has, she's an advocate for what she calls menstrual equity. Menstrual equity means to me if their body menstruates, they need access to these products. They are not able to participate equitably and equally if they can't access these products. Jen was one of the first people to make a big fuss about the tampon tax in the U.S. The tampon tax isn't really the solution or the relief. What's great about it is it got people talking. But here's the thing. We do have a system right now that allows for exemption. And like I said before, nobody ever raised the question of menstrual products. And that's why it was never included in the exemptions that were offered. Wait, did you all hear that? The existence of the so-called tampon tax has less to do with the necessity of these items and more to do with who has a seat at the table and who does not. Would you consider access to menstrual hygiene a social justice issue? Yeah, I consider access to menstrual hygiene both a social justice issue and a human rights issue. Mm. Why? It could actually be a, a real crisis, and it's not just a crisis of dignity, although that should be enough for any of us to be concerned, but it's a crisis in health. Here's the rub. Whether or not there should be sales tax exemptions, there are. Menstrual products are left out of that simply because when a group of people met up to decide what was worthy, no one raised their hand for tampons. And this sends a message about how we as a society see menstruation and whose problem we think it is. Clearly, it's not this guy's problem. But, I mean, unfortunately, we still have the tampon tax. But um, she's a rookie bike rider, I can tell. Sorry. We're in Venice, about an hour drive from Skid Row, depending on traffic. Handing out tampons works a little differently here. Well, it's Saturday, so there are some individuals who just look homeless, but they're not, so we gotta be a little careful. Hi, how are you doing? I don't, I want to ask, do you need any pads or tampons? No, but thank you. Okay. As I watch Chelsea hand out tampons, tampons that she and her friends bought, sales tax and all, I wonder who else is going to step up. Who else is going to acknowledge that periods are not Hi. just a women's tampons? issue? Hi. Oh yeah, sure, sure. I'm living on Third Street for the first time due to a heartbreak. Yeah. Where are you on Third Street? Yeah. In Venice? Yep. Oh, we're Do you want you want all of these? You're free uh, to take them. Yeah, sure. Do you want some tampon? Oh wait. Let me yeah. See. I'll just open this box. Be I mean, either one. Either one. My aunt told me when I was like 13, she's like, don't use tampons because you're going to pop the cherry and not going to be a virgin anymore. I'm like, okay. That's funny. When we go out and we're passing out kits, you know, overall, it makes me happy. However, I know that I'm privileged and I'm not here to judge. I'm not here to bother. I'm just here to, to help. Look at that. Didn't even know. We're shacking. Oh, <laughs> my shadow. All over the country, this is an issue that's hiding in plain sight. It's important to understand that fixing access to menstrual hygiene, if that's even possible, is not just about handing out supplies on the street, and it's not just about changing tax policy or electing diverse public officials. It's a combination of everything in between, starting with a radical acknowledgement that menstruation isn't just a women's issue. It's a public health issue. 
You don't have to be a woman to care. Thanks. And every single one of you came out of a uterus. Don't pretend. Thanks for watching. If you were born of a menstruating human, tell us about it below in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this, click here. And if you want to subscribe to Refinery29, click here.